Hello everyone and thanks for joining me in today's webinar. Today is the 30th of September 2024. This is our weekly analysis webinar and my name is Mohanna Diaoud. I'm the Chief Markets Analyst at PU Prime. So today basically is the beginning of a new trading week. So it's time for our weekly analysis. However, also it's the end of September, which means it's the end of the third quarter of the uh, year. So with only three uh, months left to go. Today would basically be the last trading day of the third quarter. So yes, we are expecting some higher volatility than usual to start the week. And of course, we'll have a look on the economic agenda. What do we expect and what are we anticipating for this week ahead? And we will have to, um, I, I don't want to spend more time, you know, on the economic agenda for today because I want to focus more on the technical analysis. So please let me know which instruments or which financial assets you want me to look at, which currencies, which commodities or whatever it is. Just leave it down in the comment section below because today I have, you know, like an open appetite for uh, technical analysis. And let's see what we can do because, you know, markets, okay we have seen some movements in markets recently we have seen higher volatility but at the end we are almost trading around the near or near the same levels um, let's say I'm, I'm talking about the dollar index we have seen upward moves and downward moves but generally we are trading in a sideways range and this has to end so when it ends basically we will have to be ready with our technical analysis scenarios so yeah please write down what do you want me to look at and before going through to the technical analysis let me start quickly by having a look on what basically uh, might move markets during this week on the economic agenda so i'll not be explaining a lot about the economic agenda but let me mention the key points of course if you have been following me for some time you know that i pay special interest to the comments by the Federal Reserve members and the ECB, especially that we, we have just seen, you know, uh, meetings uh, by the central banks. So after the blackout period ends, comments from the Federal Reserve members are really, really important and we should really pay attention to. So having said that, I'll not mention each and every one of them, but let's say, for example, to start off the week, we today have uh, Michelle Bowman, uh, the FOMIC member, and you know, Michelle Bowman was the only member in the last meeting which basically objected to the uh, interest rate decision by 50 basis points. She only saw 25 basis points. So Michelle Bowman's speech is important. We also have the ECB president, Christine Lagarde. And uh, let's see how this will go. We also have the uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, Jerome Powell. So yeah, gold, Nasdaq, DAX, Euro, dollar. Okay, we, we have a lot of... Uh, questions here and requests I'll, I'll get to this in a moment okay okay moving forward to tuesday tomorrow it's basically an off day for the chinese um, economy just a moment please I'll, I'll be right back with you just a moment hannah hannah yeah. can you please stop the noise Okay, thank you very much for holding on with me. So yet, yeah, on Tuesday, tomorrow, we will be having a lighter volatility than usual in the Chinese economy because it's basically off or the Chinese session, I mean the Asian session. Um, again, some speeches from ECB, the Quindus, the core CPI basically from the European economy for the month of September on a yearly and a monthly basis, definitely something that we should uh, look for slight decrease is expected from 2.8 to 2.7 some comments from the boe member pill and the pmi numbers yes yeah, so the pmi numbers are really important for the manufacturing pmi from the u.s economy it's definitely something that we should look for and yes we do expect it to drive a higher volatility 
and not a big difference that's expected but I, I usually don't follow expectations okay i don't trust expectations i wait for the data to be released and i basically compare what we have for this month with the previous uh reading so it's the actual number versus the previous number that i basically look for as for the expectations not really so and if you check the pce numbers from the u.s economy last week it was basically a little bit better than the expectations so expectations rarely actually are accurate they are just expectations so don't build your trading strategy according to those expectations just know that okay we have a good news release or an important news release that will move markets and be prepared uh, you know to see some higher volatility than usual but after the data gets announced you can only take your uh, investment decisions okay on wednesday the 2nd of october again the chinese um, session will be off for the national day member bostic will be having a speech the Gwendos again unemployment rate from the euro economy really important 6.4 is the expectation which is exactly like the same or the previous uh, reading ecb is lane so yes we do have a lot of comments from the ecb during this uh, week the Gwendos, who is the vice president of christine lagarde and we also have uh elderson and others this is the adp non-farm employment change it's not the actual data so this is not really important again pill from the bank of england boe and the inventories data bowman schnabel so yeah a lot let's say a lot of comments by uh, many many members in more than one central bank i mean boe ecb and the fomic or the federal reserve so expect that those comments will basically move markets during this uh, week and so far as for the data releases i'm only concerned with the uh, cpi from the eurozone and the pmi from the u.s economy so far for data releases so to sum up so far what we are having we are having chinese off day or off days the holidays during this week we are having many comments from central banks we are having the us pmi and the eurozone cpi um, moving forward to Thursday, again, um, the Chinese session is off. PMI data from Great Britain and the Euro economy. We have the uh, meeting minutes for the ACB. We have the job claims and the remaining of the PMI numbers from the US economy. So far, nothing new so again us pmi numbers the weekly initial uh job claims and the continuing job claims and bostic will speak again from the fomic or the federal reserve as for friday we end the week with a really important data release the most important of all which is the nfp numbers the non-farm payrolls and expectations okay are not that it will vary so much from the previous so for um, August, the reading was 142,000 new jobs. Expectations are slightly 144,000 new jobs. Um, I think the expectations will not be so accurate. I think that we might see a bigger number, especially that the previous readings are always like 90% of the time are revised, either revised down or up. And we will see this. So the 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 important thing about the nfb report are basically two things or let's say three things when it comes to the nfb you would want to see the actual number for september okay and the second thing that you will compare it with the previous reading after seeing how much this reading was basically revised either up or down and the number three thing which is really important i think that's the most important thing of all will be the unemployment rate for september so the previous reading was 4.2 expectations are that we stay around the same 4.2 levels 
to be honest 4.2 4.3 is pretty much expected and it will be digested you know by markets uh fairly in in you know a normal way however anything higher than 4.3 might definitely something you know that we we don't want to see this so the nfb numbers are the most important of all during the week us bmi numbers the eurozone cpi and tons of comments from the uh members from the central banks ahmed saying i arrived a little bit late what have i missed you just missed like 500 dollars giveaway and we have 15 uh attendees who won this so yeah you missed a lot okay it's time for technical analysis so let me go through the comments real quick um gj okay dollar euro dollar yen gold nasdaq dax euro dollar so pretty much everything that we are used to checking euro dollar gold 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 okay everyone is asking for gold let's start first by having a look on the dollar index so i'll write down what i'll have to look for so dollar index euro dollar let's have a look on the pound dollar pound yen we also have the dollar yen we will check gold we will also check us indices um, we will check dax let's have a look also on the us oil so this is what i'll have a look on technically okay if what you want is not included in this list just type it down okay but i think by having a look on the dollar the currencies gold indices and so on so we'll be having a look on most of the markets generally everything that you would want to have a look on dollar index is continuing to move lower on the weekly time frame yes it's one two three four bearish candles yes am i really convinced with this downward move no because simply there is really a big difference between a bearish candle like this or a bearish candle like this where where you have a full candle full bearish candle you know with um, tiny wicks compared to the body and with bearish candles like this one or this one or even this one i mean they are bearish but look at how long the wicks are, which means that we are having volatility. And that's why I told you at the beginning of the webinar, we have great moves. We have upward moves and downward moves on the dollar. But at the end, it's not really bearish. It's not a clear downtrend. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about. So for the daily time frame, that was the last really great downward move. Okay visibility bring to front so that was the last directional move that we had on the dollar okay uh which was by the end of august but during september what we have done on the dollar is pretty much nothing we are just moving you know in generally in a downtrend but a very weak downtrend and again if you cannot move lower with power if we don't have a powerful bearish movement look at the momentum indicator okay the momentum here says that since this low yeah technically on price we have registered a new slightly lower low but what's happening on momentum is that you have a bullish divergence so with all the respect to any fundamental factors selling the dollar index right now might not be the best move okay so in this case what i really want to see is an upward move okay this is a really powerful demand zone and that's the daily time frame okay and in this case I think I'll work with, oh, let's do both. Let's do both. Let's do the preferred version. 
and the white version. And if you don't really understand the difference between the preferred and the white version, so you have missed our supply and demand. Okay, that's interesting now. That is interesting. So we have the white version. Let's say uh, I'll, have, I'll do this in another color. Let's say it's uh, yellowish. And this one should be a little bit green. And I'll tell you exactly why it's interesting right here. Because as we speak, the dollar index reached the demand zone on the daily time frame on the wide version. Okay, so from here, we might definitely move higher, which is something I personally expect. If you're looking to wait for better prices, better entry, because let's say if you buy from here, let's let's talk numbers, let's talk trade numbers. If I go long from here, okay, where should my stop loss be? The stop loss should anyway be below, you know, the distal line, which is this line. So the stop loss should be something around here. And let's say we would be targeting for at least this one. It's pretty good risk to reward ratio 1.5. Okay, not, not really bad. However, what could happen is prices could continue to move lower to touch into the preferred zone, not the wide zone. So in this case, the target will not change. The stop loss will not change, but your entry will change a little bit. Instead of 1.5 risk to reward ratio, you might get up to 3.4 risk to reward ratio on the same trade. Why is that? Because you waited a little bit to get a better entry price. I would personally do this. Personally, I would wait for a move lower. Um, but anyway, I I'm not talking about trades. I I've given you right now a good idea about how you can trade with the dollar during this week. Uh, maybe this week, maybe not. Maybe this week will just be, you know, doing nothing. Maybe you can, you know, continue doing nothing on the dollar index. But generally, you get my idea. On the bigger time frame, I'm basically bullish on the dollar because momentum is just, you know, uh, really, really bullish at the moment. We are near, look at this demand zone. The dollar climbed from the levels of 99 or let's say 100 points to 107 points with almost no corrections that was really tiny correction so that definitely was you know institutional orders institutional buying we have never touched those levels again so here i really expect there are some unfilled orders when we get back we will fill those orders for at least a retracement to the levels of 100 on, and 1.85. So the dollar, I'm basically bullish. Momentum confirms. Demand confirms. Worst case scenario is we have our stops placed here. Even if, you know, for any, any fundamental reason, the dollar decided to move lower, it's totally fine. And I will wait for it. So I'll, I'll be removing the wide version. And from here, I will stick with my normal, you know, preferred version. I will wait for the dollar to move lower to the levels of 99, or let's say 100 points. It's not really far away. It's only 30 points. So we are currently 100.33. I'm just expecting a move lower for 35 points roughly. And um, I expect a move higher. And yes, if you are asking about this pattern, it's a falling wedge. Is it? Let me see if we can. Something like this. So yes, it's somehow a falling wedge. And the falling wedge is basically bullish. Okay, so that's for the dollar index. Let's have a look on the euro dollar. It would be somehow the same on the opposite side. Look at this on the weekly time frame. Okay, we are edging higher. Really good. However, do you see on the left hand side back in July 23 that the euro on the weekly time frame 
went lower for 10 straight weeks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, even 11 candles, 11 straight candles of weekly bearish moves. This definitely means somewhere around here we might have a supply zone. Let me check the daily time frame. This one here. I would say, yep, from here to here, that would be the wide version because those are my base candles. This candle is not really powerful, so I would say this candle is also one of my base candles. The impulse move started here. Okay, so those one, two, three, four are base candles. This is the wide version. As for the preferred version, let's say I will neglect this uh, wick. And let's see, have we really touched any? Okay, we have already touched the wide and the preferred. So in this case, just remove the preferred and we have already tapped into, uh, I'm sorry, remove the wide and focus on the preferred. So yes, in this case, we have already tapped into the supply zone on the euro. We already filled some orders here. We went back for 190 points. Yes, I would say I might expect another move lower from the supply zone. I would expect, but in this case, on the Euro, I will wait for extra confirmation. Why? Because on the dollar, we are trading near demand zones. We, it's fresh demand on the dollar, right? This, this level here, it's fresh. We have never touched those levels before. So we created the demand here, never touched those. On the Euro, no. We created the demand levels here. We touched it here. You can see how well the demand levels are because once we touch those levels, no words about it, we, we, we fell lower. But in this case, this makes the supply level here not fresh, okay? So in this case, I will look for extra confirmation. What's the confirmation I'll be looking for? Okay, I have already got my confirmation that the momentum is lower on the eight hour, maybe the daily time frame. we have a bearish divergence and everything. So I still believe we will move lower, but because the zone is not really fresh, I will look for a market structure change on the lower time frame. So let's say I will go for the four hour time frame. Whatever confirmation you want to wait for is valid. So in this case, you can draw a trend line as long as the euro is trading above the trend line, you will never short. Just wait, you know, for the trend, trend line to be broken. Personally, I never use trend lines. I have stopped using trend lines since years and I just follow the market structure. So that's a high, low, high, low, high and so on. Once we break the last low, we will have a change of character and I will be short the euro versus the dollar. So in this case, I will short uh, maybe by breaking below 1.1145, okay? So for 1.1145, let's say. So as long as the euro is trading above those levels, I will not touch it. I still expect it to move lower, okay? But from here, we are trading near uh, unfresh supply zone so i wouldn't really say here would be a good you know i mean it's good to short here but it's risky okay so i will wait for the last low to be broken on the euro versus the dollar and then i will uh short the euro okay okay that's for the euro let's have a look on the pound I have a question here, I think. Okay, gold. I'll look at gold. Don't worry. Answer life. How about the pound versus the dollar? It's just moving higher. Guys, I really hate markets when things are moving in one direction. 
just like gold and what's happening with gold at the moment um 36 that's really far away on the weekly time frame not really anything's happening here we broke above this resistance on the daily time frame again we are having a higher high but on prices we are having a lower high do we have any interesting levels here so that was support we created some sort of supply here it's a drop base drop So that was a clear drop, some base candles, another drop, but this is also not fresh, is it? Let me see. Um, where are the base candles? I would say from here. Those are my base candles. So it's a drop, we had a base, we had a drop, and currently, and this, is, this was basically a previous support, so we took our time, some extra supply went into here and yes on the moment right at the moment the pound is trading around those levels right because the next levels are basically so far i mean there is definitely supply here but we are talking about extra 200 pips no it's not for this week okay so for during this week we are already trading inside supply on the pound versus the dollar. However, um, we are forming what seems to be one high or one top, another top here. So I will again wait for confirmation on the pound. Once we break the low 1.3310, I will have my confirmation that, okay, we will be having a double top once we have a double top we break below the low from a supply zone with weak momentum i will definitely short it however i have my condition which is to break below this low what happens if guys i always give you one expected scenario or i, I don't give you an expected scenario basically i give you the best scenario if it happens you will have a high probability trade okay so we have we have we have mentioned the dollar okay we have mentioned what, what's the condition on dollar is basically we we tap into the demand uh, i've mentioned a condition on the euro which is to break below the previous low my condition on the pound is to break below the previous low to form a double top so those are conditions if they happen during the week this will give you a very high probability trade with your stops with your targets and so on what happens if they don't really happen okay from here as soon as i end the webinar maybe the pound will just shoot higher if it shoots higher okay it, it does we, i will not catch every um, move in the markets but in this case i'll not be buying why because the momentum is not really weak i will not be buying the pound or any other instrument while i'm having a clear bearish divergence because it might go higher a little bit for a false break before going down so i'm not giving you my expectation i'm trying to give you some analysis on some conditions that for during the week you are prepared if this happens i'm prepared to do this if this happens i'm prepared to do this if nothing happens i'm staying out of the market because basically i'm not throwing my money out this is the mentality i want you to have in the markets i'm getting myself prepared what's the best thing that could happen on this chart is that we break this low we have a double top we from a supply zone with a weak momentum if this happens okay we will short we will have uh, our profits that's what okay um what's happening on the dollar yen absolutely hate it i think this is the channel right i just spotted the channel right away is it or not it's not
Okay, definitely some sort of demand here. We touched into and we are getting higher. Can you draw the RRR on the pound before moving on? If you want the actual trade or the risk to reward, let's do it. So in this case, if what I expect happens and we have a move lower, okay, um, I will see how price action evolves here. And first of all, I'll have a look. I'll have to look at the targets where I should expect this to move. I I, I probably expect it to move around here. Okay, so that's my target. My entry will probably be around here, and my stop should be definitely higher above the supply. So from here, let's say. I don't think this would be a good risk to reward ratio. It's not. It's barely a one to one risk to reward ratio. It's not. So in this case, if you want to get a better risk to reward ratio, but this is somehow a little bit riskier, you will need to go down and look at the shorter time frame. So instead of just placing your stops above, you know, the whole supply zone, let's say prices, this is purely theoretical. This is just for educational purposes, okay? Let's say this is what happened on the price. In this case, if I'm going to short, I would say, okay, I don't really need my stops to be placed above the supply zone itself maybe I will just place it above this high because we are in a downward trend, right? We are creating and forming lows and highs. If this high, let's say, gets broken, we are having a new higher high on the short term market structure. This means that we should not be in this trade moving lower. So in this case, I would be placing my stops, you know, and it's still risky. It's a little bit still risky, but it makes sense because on the one hour time frame or the 30 minutes time frame, you're having an internal market structure that you can basically, it will, it will help you pick, you know, a better stop loss. So in this case, my stop loss should maybe around some, somewhere around here. So instead of having a very, very close one to one risk to reward ratio, it will be three to one risk to reward ratio. And in this case, I don't even need to stay this long in a trade or maybe if, because it's a three to one risk to reward ratio. As soon as I get my one to one, okay, I will move my stops to break even and then continue for the higher target. So in this case, basically, I'm only targeting 50 pips, right? It's a 50 pips move. Once we get the 50 pips in our favor, just secure your trade so it's a risk-free trade and then you can just you know hope for the 150 pips that you want so actually executing a trade is way harder than an an analyzing the market uh, I'm, I'm trying my best to give you you know what i would personally do but it would take you know uh hours and hours of webinars okay on the dollar yen i think we are we are having a great session today with the technical analysis you guys are asking great questions so yeah i'm happy with it um a move lower and definitely a move higher so yes this is definitely a demand zone uh two base candles this is a silly very silly candle but we have this is a demand we tapped into we even falsely broke this level and we're heading higher anyway oh this is a daily uh one hour time frame no let's have a look on the four hour the eight hour i think no this is not the demand yeah exactly this is where i want to focus one, two, three, and we moved higher. Base candles. Let's say, no, sorry. Let's say this is the demand zone. Let's see what happened here. 
again we falsely broke this level because basically it wasn't fresh so this was a demand zone right as soon as we tapped into it we moved higher 750 pips so this is what a fresh demand zone would do however when we get back and test those levels again you don't really trust it you know to buy because it's not so yeah i mean prices still went higher from it around 400 pips but this time it was weaker i mean for the reaction um i'm not so happy with what's going on here on, on the dollar yen and i think there is no any good scenario in it so we have this last support and we have this last resistance technically this is great supply okay on a short time frame yeah I, I will be shorting the dollar yen because the move higher was really weak right again we had bearish divergence somewhere around here we had some powerful supply and we broke the previous low so it's definitely a change of character so yeah let's say on the very short time frame any upward moves is basically something i'll be looking to short so in this case look for fibonacci retracement it's not the best okay not the best analysis i mean not really high probability but i'm trying just to give you an understanding of how this chart uh, could play out so this support here with this 50% Fibonacci retracement, we might tap into it 144 levels before moving lower. So yes, on the dollar, maybe we could short it. My problem with shorting the dollar yen is that I'm basically bullish dollar overall, the dollar index. So for the dollar index to move higher and for the dollar yen to move lower, as I expect, we should see some strength on the Japanese yen currency itself. And I don't really know what, what they, they, they want to do with their economies so far. Um, the dollar yen, we had some resistance, definitely a false break. I think we, we wrote this down as, a, uh, yeah, I, I caught this. Wait, let me check. Pound yen, pound yen, pound yen. Oh, yes, it was this one. And wait, I'll have to uh, show you this one because I will have to show you this one. Where is trading view? This one, this one, this one. And this is the trading compass. This one. This is the uh, technical report that I basically sent to our clients, okay? So when was that? That was on Thursday, the 26th of September, so last Thursday. On the pound yen, I had my resistance here around 193. I'm not sure if you can see this or not. Wait, I'll have to... Yeah, I think you can see it. This is the resistance. And I clearly wrote that we maintain our bearish outlook from resistance levels, but be cautious against potential false breakouts before a downturn. So although I expected the pound yen to move lower from those levels, I basically anticipated a false breakout. Why is that? Because simply momentum said that okay although prices are moving higher momentum says that we will definitely need a downturn before you know fr from those resistance but because prices were moving a little bit higher i thought yeah maybe we will see uh, a false breakout before you know uh moving lower and yeah that's exactly what happened let me get back to the trading view wait 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 i think we are back here but let me get the pound yen where is the pound yen yeah here it is so 
this is exactly what happened. This is exactly how we, we, we played out with the pound yen. We expected a false breakout, which happened. And this is why I'm telling you, if you have a resistance and prices moved above or you know beyond those resistance levels, should I buy because we broke resistance? No, you shouldn't because momentum is telling you we will have to go back. And this is why I'm telling you, supply and demand is really powerful when you know somehow to read when prices will break above when prices will rebound and when prices will try breaking above but will fail and you will have a false breakout and this is why i'll be having the uh, momentum webinar on the 11th of october make sure you sign up for this if you didn't yet sign up okay so yeah back to the pound yen pretty much i expect the same because this downward move is powerful so yeah downward move maybe we will we will move higher a little bit before moving lower this here should be around 50 percent of fibonacci is it yes it's 50 percent fibonacci so pretty much the same uh as the dollar yen okay uh, i think we are taking a lot of time today and i have other things to do after this one so yeah let's have a look where is my uh list so we spoke about the dollar euro pound pound yen dollar yen so we have gold i don't like gold absolutely hate gold and hate the chart because basically it's not moving because of any technical reason it's just moving higher because of what we have in the middle east the high tensions so we are definitely just you know people are buying gold as a safe haven but technically we definitely should see a downward move um, on the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, we had a bearish candle here on Friday, and today we are trading a, bit, a little bit lower. Again, the downward move is not really great. Okay, like what we have done during the last two weeks, we will give you some conditions to short gold. And during the last two weeks, they never happened, so we never shorted gold. Because I'm not just short, I'll have to make sure that if I short, I have some technical reasons to short. So I will give you those conditions. If this happened, we will short gold. If not, just buy, just buy gold, guys. So we will have conditions for both, right? And on the four hour time frame, it seems that we are having some sort of resistance. I'm oh, sorry, support here. This is a clear support. I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, let's make it really simple because it can it can play out in both directions. You see this candle? 26.51. A four hour close below 20, close guys, not just trading below because we have already tried to trade below previously, but failed to close. A close for a four hour candle below the 26.51, I would personally short, okay, uh, for a retracement or a close above 2677 I'll buy it's just as clear as that because we are we are moving higher on the dollar right either we break below the last low and this would definitely mean some retracement or this could have been the retracement we can just move higher close below, uh, above the 2677 and the uptrend is just continuing okay but with what's happening recently in the Middle East you know, uh, the killings, the, the geopolitical tensions, the bombings in Lebanon and, and everything, I think it will just continue moving higher. However, uh, I'm bullish dollar. Technically, I'm bullish dollar. Where is the demand zone? Oh, it's here. Um, so maybe, maybe the best of both will happen. Maybe the dollar will just tap into the demand before moving higher, which means that the gold will just do nothing around here for some time until the dollar taps into demand when dollar moves higher gold will start retracing that's what i personally hope 
and um, believe me i have nothing what about the momentum here and on on gold it's definitely bearish definitely bearish 100 percent you can just see this was the high that we created on the 16th of september right and that was the high on momentum prices continue to move way higher how about momentum no and although prices now are trading sideways here look at momentum no way it's really bearish however and sometimes you can also know okay there's nothing as the holy grail of trading i do love supply and demand and i do love momentum but you could also know and you should also know that some things things will just not work okay especially that momentum okay is bearish momentum is telling you, you gold should go down because technically it should gold is not going higher because of any technical reason it's going higher because of high tensions just like the rsi let's say the rsi it says that you can have the limit uh, of 70 to 30 above 70 is overbought believe me when i say back in covid times and not, i cannot really remember what was the instrument i saw rsi go as high as 97 points it was really high sometimes technicals just you know when there is a really good fundamental reason markets just you know because if if someone is really afraid of what's happening in the middle east okay high tensions and so on he wants to secure his investments by buying something such as a safe haven believe me he doesn't even know what momentum is he will just buy gold in this case you will have a discrepancy between what you see on the charts and what actually happened so in this case i'm telling you gold should retrace because it hasn't been retracing recently momentum is bearish it should go down but by the end if it goes up it just goes up you cannot tell it no okay um so yeah what time frame is this so uh, this is the eight hour let's have a look on the u.s oil Okay. Um, it's moving higher. That's the last support and that's the last resistance somehow. No, wait. No, sorry, it's moving lower. Because, yeah, this is some resistance or supply or call it whatever you call it here. Okay. This is some sort of demand or support. We, we rejected those levels of resistance in a really powerful way. So, yeah, the upward move is just a retracement. And I'm expecting to go back to the 65.80 uh, during the week where could we see the retracement start from this should be the best which is always the 50 percent guys when the 50 percent fibonacci retracement is coming with previous price action so this was a tiny little bit of support and this is the 50 percent so this would be my best entry for a short position on the us oil during the week okay I think I'll have to go quickly also with uh, the DAX and the NASDAQ. Let's start with the NASDAQ because this is what you guys asked for. If you remember, if you remember, I spoke about some sort of supply here on the NASDAQ, right? And I spoke about this supply forming some bearish momentum. What happened was prices moved higher. However, this might be a false breakout. I don't really like what I'm seeing here. The daily time frame is an engulfing candlestick, which is good. The weekly 
okay. Wait a minute. What a powerful supply. This was July and August, right? Yeah. That was the supply zone that we formed on July and August. Remember when markets were crashing and so on. We tapped into this. Look at as soon as we tapped into this, the dollar is moving. Uh, I'm sorry, the Nasdaq is moving already lower around 400 pips. And momentum is lower. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really bearish. I'm bearish. Um, Nasdaq and indices generally during this week we might see but I missed this trade to be honest I, I didn't trade it and yeah maybe we will go lower to 19500 this is what I'm basically expecting okay the DAX what is going on with the DAX because someone asked for it momentum is again not so good it's moving higher but momentum couldn't catch is it an an all-time high okay so just like gold just like gold if you have something which is trading near all-time highs and momentum tells you to short you just don't short because okay I'm bearish DAX. I believe as per momentum indicators that I will have to retrace before continuing the move lower or higher. But I don't have previous price action to short it from. So in this case, you just leave it. Just leave it. Or as like we have done with gold, set some conditions. So in this case, but no, DAX is continuing higher. DAX is continuing higher because that's the pole we had a flag higher moving higher it's currently trading out 19300 or 19400 i think it will tap into 220000 and 21000 really soon just forget about momentum if people are buying so be it that's it okay do we have any questions left please let me know in the comments section Do we have any questions left? Okay, I think we're done. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go through the... Uh, if you remember the dump on GJ was caused by fundamentals, usually when this happens, it's only a short term, as in this case, it was the result of the elections. Believe me when I say, yeah, I, I, I study fundamentals and my major basically was economics. So I, I don't just, you know, in addition to be uh, being a certified financial technician, I'm also, you know, I'm specialized in economics. So I study fundamentals. However, when I trade, I trade what I see. I don't absolutely care if I expect the dollar to go down, tap into demand and move higher. I don't have a fundamental reason for that. And believe me, markets don't have really fundamental reasons for every move. Sometimes markets just breathe. Okay, that's totally fine. So I trade what I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great analysis. Thank you so much. Dear Mohanad, I don't receive these. Where do you send to clients? Email or Telegram or else? No, we actually send it to clients. I mean, your account manager uh, could send it to you. Um, send me an email and I'll, I'll make sure this is delivered to you daily. Just send me an email, okay? Thank you so much. Are we doing the middle of week analysis? Not yet. Not yet, because basically during October, uh, I might be going for some vacation. Not, not confirmed yet. And either vacation or... You know, I want to go for a vacation, but I know that I have to do my job. So I'll try my best 
maybe I, I could do it from home maybe I'm not sure yet okay but you know in order to start something new no it will definitely be maybe from November or something thank you very much thank you for your kind words okay guys I will meet you next uh, week I was about to say next month it's technically yes next month so the next uh, session will be the next week and it will be the beginning of a new trading quarter I hope that we with only three months left in this year you have basically uh, fulfilled some of your dreams that you wished for by the beginning of the year if not yet you still have time so yes I wish you all the best momentum webinar on 11th of October yes uh, the link I think should be on our LinkedIn page or Facebook page I think our team should have posted it somewhere or yeah if you do have an account with PU Prime you will you will receive an email with the uh, link to register anyway let me get it for you also as well why not let me do it let me just copy and paste the link let me make it easier for you so on the 11th of October yeah mastering squeeze momentum here is it uh, here's the link send it to everyone so the webinar for the momentum indicator which is the squeeze momentum will be on the 11th of webinar i've just dropped you the link and as we speak yeah let's see how many uh, of you will be signing up thank you guys for this wonderful session i'll meet you guys again next week please have a safe trading week and please stay safe yourself thank you very much goodbye